Welcome back to Let's Roger That. I'm Jill. Today, Today I'm going to introduce you to a Sepco product which is made for your surface grinder. It's a wheel assembly for your grinding wheel. And this particular one comes with a balancing system in it. And uh, you may have seen or heard of it. And, uh, and if you've purchased it, perhaps you even had difficulty in balancing it like I did because clearly I'm not smart enough to understand the instructions. So uh, there's a uh, video out there by uh, Stan from Barzi Industrial and um, I thought I would add to that a little tiny bit. Um, so essentially these balancing wheels are um, carved out on the inside and they go, you know, when they go together like this they are uh, there's some lines that are engraved in them so you have to line them up and then from that point you can balance the system and there's arrows telling you how to uh, you know turn them in order to get the weight so let me just uh, put my glasses on here for a second okay so get these here for you one of the lines is not all that that um, dark, so it's hard to see the, this one on, on this here. But, okay, so let me cr put these open for you to see. See how they're op opposed? So when you turn them, if you turn them, you know, in the direction they tell you, essentially you're adding weight in one direction and taking weight off in the other. So, uh, and that's how you balance it but how do you get to this part okay there's actually steps that you have to follow to get to before you get here step one <laughs> i sound like a training video now uh, step one is you mount your grinding wheel on the wheel assembly all right and uh as you can see this this is where those uh, balancing weights go well i didn't know but back here there's dimples so you're supposed to put one of those tightening wrenches here and then one on this side and crank it so that you know uh, it doesn't come apart or come loose or cause issues later once you've got that done put that on your grinder tighten it up dress the wheel and then take and then there comes the critical part right what I do is on the spindle I make a, a little mark with a, a a marker right and I put a mark on this as well that way I can put it back to the exact, exact same spot later on okay so the next portion once you've got your your wheel dressed and trued right then you bring it back to your bench where you've got your balancing uh, jig now if you did like me I purchased one of Mr. Sepko's uh, arbors and honestly the product is fantastic so uh, it go, just goes in like this it has a screw to retain it like I'm telling you a great 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 product sadly their catalog Mr. Sepko I'm sorry to say this Bill but the catalog sucks uh, online it, it's awful right so I ended up having to or I ended up ordering the wrong stuff um, and it was on my own fault but you know, I corrected it by making a spacer. But you know, having a better catalog would be a huge bonus. So, okay, so enough rambling. I'm starting to sound like Mr. P. So now what you do, you take your wheel, so you, it's in the arbor. Don't put the balancing wheels just yet. What you want to do is put it on your balancing um, cradle and then balance this. All right, see where the the wheel on its own uh, balances out to be. Okay, so let's zoom in a bit on the cradle. So we'll go through this exercise together. And hopefully I don't put my fat head in the works. All right, so you put it on your cradle and you know, I, I'm not gonna bother, bore you with the, the whole cradle thing, it's been balanced, all right? Now this is the part where you need to be patient. So you let your wheel settle. 
And when it does, what you'll do is you'll put a mark at the top. Like mine's going to take quite a ways, uh, quite a while to settle down because it's not far from being balanced. The slower it is, the more balanced it is, right? Or the closer to being balanced that it is. But nevertheless, we're talking about things that need to be very precise here. Okay, let me let me move my camera a little closer so you can actually hear me a little better. Alright, this should be a little better for sound if nothing else. So as you can see my wheels come to a stop and I've put, I've put a little star here at the top just to, to show me where it is. Now, the, a good way to do that to uh, actually check where it's going to land is actually when it stopped like this turn it 90, 90 degrees and then let it go okay and then let it settle down to where it stops once it stops do it from the other side 90 degrees and then until it stops okay so let's say it's now stopped great now I'm going to take my little balancing donuts I call them that donuts Mr. Bill's gonna go nuts <laughs> sorry Bill <laughs> all right so you take those uh, lines you put that in there and you put you line up those lines with uh, with the mark you just made now yeah hopefully you can see this see there's like little arrows uh, let me see her on there on the back one here the arrow is on this side and on this one the arrow is on that side that tells you okay like, and just we'll take it off for now so let's say I go on this way and then I go this way right what's gonna happen is more weight's gonna be put out at the top and then it'll counterbalance wherever it was before so that that's the whole principle is very smart um, and simple and the cool thing is that these are machined so that dirt does not get in. So once you once you're balanced, that's it, uh, and just leave it there for the re the life of the uh, of the wheel. All right, let's continue. So now we're here, and just make sure that I didn't mess anything up. I'm going to do the same exercise again. Right. And I can just tell by the speed at which the wheel moves that I didn't mess up too bad, right? So it's pretty lined up to where it was. So let me just stop it for now. Okay, so next step, they give you a couple of wrenches. Allen wrenches, Allen keys, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And now what we need to do is we need to add some weight to the top. Now, the, the, the whole idea about this is that you turn both of those the one with the, the arrow on the right goes right the one with the arrow on the left towards goes left towards the left so say we want to move it like an eighth of, of an inch in total right both of them sixteenth of an inch approximately so now I'm going to do the same exercise one more time you see how it's moving a little bit slower already so that means we're counterbalancing the weight distribution the bleh, we're counterbalancing the weight already so I can stop that now because I know it's gonna take a little while I sometimes it'll take 10 minutes before these wheels will settle and by the way I am no expert at this I am a hobbyist a beginner a nobody so you're gonna have to experiment on your own so I'm, I'm mixing, I'm moving this about a sixteenth of an inch at a time. And see, again, it's moving a little bit slower, a little bit further. Now it's going to take a lot longer for it to settle down. But that's the whole idea here, right? So 
by turning these like, like this, the weights are basically doubling at the top and the hollow is at the bottom and it's getting bigger down there as well. So I'm going to do a little bit more and uh, be prepared to be patient because this takes time. It's not a quick process. Now if you want you can put little marks you know as to where they were that way you're not just guesstimating. Look at that. Huge difference already. We're I'm almost there. Well, now the weight though it seems to be a little bit more to the right. So I have to I'm gonna have to compensate for that. But see how slow it's moving? So the whole process, this is pretty quick once you figure out how it works. It's just when you, you know, the, well, number one, the instructions are not, are not all that detailed for a layman. Uh, it's good, I guess, if you're a, a real machinist, but uh, some jobby like me, not that great. Okay, so I know I had a little more weight to the right, so I'm going to move both of these a little tiny touch together to the left. So I'm going to move them, say, uh, about a sixteenth of an inch, both of them. All right. I'm sorry, they, watching this video is like watching paint dry for someone that's maybe not all that interested. But I'm telling you, like if I struggled with this badly um, over the last while. Now I just got these a few days ago, and, well a week ago nearly now. And I'm still, you know, I'm still discovering better ways to do this. So the bottom line is that you need to be patient. So let it do its thing, let it settle down wherever it's going to settle. At some point when it goes this slow, you need to just let it settle on its own. You need to know where the uh, heavier part is, where the lighter part is, and then do continue doing your guesswork until you get it right. But I'm at the point now, my, my surface finish has improved significantly, but not quite enough because I needed to do this one more time. So this is it. I'm doing this with you. So essentially my mark has moved, you know, I moved everything to the left, 16th of an inch. Well, my little asterisk has moved to the left about 16th of an inch. So I'm not far, but I think I'm going to move the rear one maybe at 30 seconds, so here you go. Uh, this is pretty cool. Now, of all the reasons where you would, you know, give yourself <laughs> an excuse to buy a, uh, let's say, a Starrett level or whatnot, a little four-inch one, this would be it. Um, because uh, having this, the, the whole cradle perfectly balanced is pretty important for the whole exercise. Okay, so... I'm going to continue doing this and I'll bring you back in a few minutes when I get it right or wherever long it's going to be and then once it's right we'll put it on the grinder and we'll do a test run and see if it made any difference at all. Okay so I've reached a point where I can get the wheel to hover pretty well anywhere. All right, so if I put it here it'll pretty well stay there. Um, and that'll happen in, in any, pretty well any location, right? 
So that's what you want. You want to be able to stop. Now, when you do, when you're done with this, the little Allen keys or Allen screws that are in here, the the, the set screws, are have a nylon tip in it. Make sure you tighten them sufficiently, otherwise they'll come loose. Happened to me. So um, yeah, I mean not going nuts about it, but just tighten them, right? Okay. So now we'll take off this arbor, put it on the machine, and do a test. All right. So I'm at the grinder. I put my wheel on. The weights go towards the back, by the way. Um, and then, you know, it's evident. But uh, if you've had your grinder for a while, you know that. But if you don't, you know, you've got a grinder like me. Uh, it, it's not always obvious. So, this is all tight and preloaded before when we balanced it. This, in my case, is what, there's an Allen, uh, or the, um, a set screw that goes into the spindle. And then this knot here threads onto that sits against the wheel assembly and you really got to give it a good tightening right so don't mess around with that usually i would put the cover but i want you to see the result of balancing the wheel all right so that's the only reason i'm leaving this um, cover off by the way if you don't know much about surface grinders they're extremely dangerous these wheels if these grinding wheels if not in good conditions can actually explode no you know, cause you severe injury or death. So you don't want to mess around with that kind of stuff. All right, so I'm going to turn it on. And whereas before, this cover here would vibrate. So let's see what happens. Wow, what a difference. So right away, I know that it's made a difference because I don't see that cover moving at all. So I'm gonna stop the grinder, I'm gonna get a test piece, and then we'll give it some grinding. Okay, so I'm getting set up to do my little light grinding. Uh, let's see here, let's go to a, a, another tip here, first of all. Um, the first thing I should do now is, before I grind anything, I need to trim my wheel again with the diamond simply because I've rebalanced it and uh, you know I would negate any improvement that I made uh, should I not do that okay so because this <laughs> machine is so dangerous you really can't mess around with this stuff right you, you got to do things right um, my wheel turns counterclockwise that means you want to put your sharpening diamond on the exit side of of the wheel because if something happens at least it'll kick it out versus suck it in and then destroy the whole thing right the other thing is that you want to avoid problems you see i'm just going to do this now i'm going to put my stops in place to make sure that the bed doesn't move while i'm actually sharpening or throwing this this wheel right so that that's really important like you don't want to mess around with this stuff all right so let's move it here i said i've moved a little too far okay tighten that up maybe this part here okay Here we go. Now that that's done, I can lower the head further till I get close enough. Now my, my fine adjustment on my grinder has a five eighths of an inch in movement. So that, that's a lot. So you don't have to get too close with this rough adjustment. Say like 50 thousandths or so, there you go. Now the next thing that you need to do before you trim your wheel is lock the head, right? You don't want any more movement than, than you really need to. It's just like a lathe or a mill, lock the axis. All right, so now I'm gonna move this out of the way and 
I'm going to start the grinder and I'm going to slowly move down the fine feed and until I make contact with the diamond. So I'm going to zoom you in on that. Okay, so here we go. It's going to be noisy, so I'm not going to speak too much. <laughs> I'm moving about one thousandth at a time until I touch. Takes time, but that's okay. No rush. Go, I'm touching, go right across. Now, when it's made full contact and you go across, you'll hear this ring, and you should have a nice steady ring all the way through. Plus, if you're looking, you'll see the scars all the way through as well. I'm sure if you can hear that, but there was some of that ringing now. It's like a bell, but out of that constant. So I'm going to take off about eight, nine thousandths out of it. Couple more thousands and then I'll call it done. That's great. I hope. <laughs> okay. So now I'll take this off. My uh, another reminder always make sure that your chuck is on, right? You don't want things to go flying across the room. So, okay, now, well, here's an interesting tidbit. A grinder is one of the most dirt producing machines out there, yet to get good, clean finish, <laughs> you really need to uh, clean things up to make sure you get good finish. So I'm gonna put this here. Usually you put things at a 30 degree angle. I just want to see if there's any more ripples in my setup. So I'm going to unlock the head, bring it down. Okay, let's see how far I am here. I'm going to go down a little bit more. Good enough for me. All right, I'm gonna lock the head one more time. This is really important. Don't skip on those details. Now, chuck is on. Okay, great, so that's it. Now I'm gonna move my travel tab, whatever it is called, and give myself space for when I get to the end of each travel. And there's good. Good for me anyway. Now remember, 
I, I'm just starting out with this. So don't take my advice. I like grant for granted. Uh, check with people that know what they're doing. But from what I've learned so far, uh, I, I think I'm on the right track because things have been improving. So now I'm going to bring this down. Now this is just a test piece, so not to worry about it. I'm not going to break anything. So I'm just moving the wheel back and forth. Usually you put a piece of like paper in here, paper being like about four thousandths of an inch. I'm not doing anything critical there. Okay, so bring it back up, say four or five thousandths. Move it out of the way. And now we're gonna do our test grind on um, this little piece that I've worked with before. All right, there you go. I'm going to bring it down until I touch the little spark and go 1,000 at a time. video 
will hopefully uh, work in your favor. You see there ain't a whole lot of sparks here when you're looking at a half a thousand. Uh, the finish isn't bad. It's, um, it's certainly a lot less ripple than they used to be. I still see some. But I think, uh, well, I, what I'm going to do anyway is go over this about until there's no spark at all. Ah, that's going to take time, of course. Uh, if you're wondering how far I actually cranked this thing back, let me just bring it back here. Okay. And that's kind of important, actually. This wheel brings you back and forth. This wheel brings me side to side. It's in thousands of an inch. So, if, and there's quite a bit of backlash in this thing. Uh, we'll get into that some other time. But I'll move it, say, 25 thousandths at a time. Let me go back here, backlash it out. I went from 10 to 40, so that's 30,000. And I'm already sparked out, but I'm going to go right across it to make sure now the term spark out for all of us beginners means like you grind until there's no more significant amount of sparks coming off. That means the wheel is done its job right to its proper depth. I'm amazed at how smooth everything sounds anyway. Something you can do when you're doing all these modifications and attempts to try to reduce vibration is put your hand on the cover. You'll feel the vibration. And, and if it's real tight, like as if you put your hand on a, a motor, well, you, then it's pretty clear that there's not a lot of uh, additional vibration being transmitted to your spindle. This is a tool maker surface grinder, the Malt uh, Rockwell Delta. And the head sticks out a fair bit, so right there, you lose on the rigidity. And I'm not sure if uh, it basically, you know, it limits the amount of, of uh, surface finish quality that you can get out of it. Quite possible. Alright, so that's pretty nice. Turn off the grinder. Now let's have a look at this, uh, what they call a stamp. Okay. That's, I'm satisfied with that. That's not, not too bad. Alright, let's zoom you in here. Now I still have little tiny bit of ripples in here. I really do, but they're really tight together and the finish is significantly better than before I had the uh, wheel assembly balancing system from Sopco. Now, um, is it worth your money? I don't know. I had made a wheel balancing system prior to, couldn't quite get it right. This is a pretty significant improvement for me. So there you have it. Um, that's the procedure on how to use the Sopco wheel assembly balancing system. And these are the results that I'm getting. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. 
leave me comments. I always like to hear from you. I reply to all comments. And uh, take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.